All right, welcome back everyone to Get the Net. We got Gussie coming on today talking about a giant no live scope $5,000 entry fishing tournament. He's uh, jumping in this week down in Lake Lanier. There's some big names there, some pretty wild stuff going on with this derby. So he's going to fill us in there, give us the report. Going to talk about a couple things happening around here. Stick around. We'll see you in there. Welcome to Get the Net, a fishing podcast that takes a deep dive into competitive events, fishing news, tips, tactics, and most importantly, interviews with some of the most interesting and in-tuned anglers from Canada to the central U.S. We're leaving no stone unturned to bring you the most raw and authentic talk talk. My name is Jamie Bruce, and while my resume says bass, my frying pan says walleye, I'm no stranger to the multi-species realm. Whether you're puttering on tackle, driving the bus, cutting the grass, or killing time in a 9 to 5, I'll try to give you something in every episode to take with you on the water, or at the very least, bring you a few laughs. Alright, welcome back everyone. Sitting in the garage here, hard on the tinker, you can't see behind me, but it's an absolute yard sale. Spring cleaning special, all the things you accumulate throughout the years just go wild and to just add to the mess of an tinkering on some tackle pretty heavy i got a bunch of new do it molds over there playing with some different hooks and airbrushing and all kinds of heavy tinkering it's amazing what you can do when you're not uh driving around and fishing a nine tournament schedule and working a full-time job <laughs> take one of those out and you get a little more time even if you add a kid to the mix but yeah other than that been playing on the bt fishing side of things we got some big things coming the minnow game's obviously not going anywhere in the industry and I feel like we're kind of in the area where, you know, it all kind of started and uh, we should be the ones to be innovating. So keep your eyes peeled there. We've got some some cool things coming out. And uh, if you haven't already seen the Smeltonator custom jigs with the red line hooks, Brian's got his own signature color. I got my own signature color and then we got it in the OG. Those are available at sportsheadquarters.ca and in store. Uh, There's just a limited amount of skews on there just the popular ones all the two aught hooks and if you're a big baiter or a you know a pike guy or a trout angler or something like that we got the new shadnator jigs in stock at sports headquarters also they're uh three quarter and one ounce with five aught to seven aught hooks so you're playing for keeps with one of those big rigs but looks like the ice is going to be here for you know at least a couple more weeks we got a bunch of snow and Still lots of trucks out there and everything, but I think it's going to happen fast when it goes. There's not a whole lot of ice out there relative to what we usually have. So, I mean, probably be in the boat. I would say the next couple of weeks, I got a 17 foot outfitter that sat there all year last year. That's usually like my early and late season and camp boat. And I'm just getting ready to pull that thing out. I got a 24 volt, 60 amp powerhouse that I'm excited to throw in there. Um, one of the biggest problems with like those little tin boats is you got to put, if you want a 24 volt or 36 volt trolling motor on it, you got to put two or three big lead acid or EGM batteries up in the bow and you throw a big rig up there like me and the damn props hanging out of the water when I'm running down the bank. So going to save a lot of weight. I'm hooking it up to the running gun charger. I just leave that rig, you know, in the water at camp. So by the time I putter around, it'll probably just top up that battery and, um, Should be able to go for weeks on that thing. But yeah, it'll be nice to actually fish around here in the spring. I totally missed the boat last year. You know, hardly fish Lake of the Woods. Uh, It's going to be good without being on the road, putting 60,000 kilometers (laughs) on or whatever it was. I did the math, doing my taxes the other day and tallied up all the bills just from the opens. And it was uh, around 17 and a half grand just in fuel for ripping around. So... (laughs) be a little more affordable fishing around here and we've got a lot of great fishing opportunities so i'm looking forward to that probably sneak up to the wabagoon a little bit i haven't been able to recreationally fish there in a while and uh up to cedar lake to nordic point lodge if you saw the smallmouth video from there you'll know why i want to get back there at at ice out and toil with those smallmouths a little bit but yeah lots of fun it's nice having actual time to get ready get all the 13 rods in order uh, you know, get the tackle organized. I switched everything to those wrap stack trays and, you know, just getting dialed in finally. Last year was just such a yard sale. It's nice to be able to take your time. Um, if you're doing any spring shopping, two things I got to tell you about, 
not because they asked me to, just because I got to give you a heads up because they're going to sell fast and you're going to want to get in on it. The Sims Rogue Pant, uh, I told the boys at sports headquarters, like, you got to get these things in. You know, they're unreal. They're pretty affordable, you know, compared to other like high end hiking pants and just pants you can potter on and fish and whatever, but nice fishing in them and going to wear them in the boat a bunch. They're not going to last long. Definitely worth a look there. And while you're there, check out the Crush City lineup. I just got back from the Bassmaster Classic and it's the buzz right now. There's huge tournaments being won on all kinds of Crush City baits right now. Uh, Raz just got second in the Classic. I'm sure you listen to that podcast, but he's using the cleanup craw. It's what I caught most of my bass on when I was on Ufala this year. And it's, you know, the word's getting out there and people are buying it up. Like I've got buddies buying it from Canada, shipping it down to the U.S. And it's just one of those things that people can't get enough of. So don't wait if you're going to get some Crush City, you're going to want it in your boat. Keep your mitts off my wall behind me. I'm stalking her up. I'm sure I'll tear through all of that at some point this season. There's only a handful of skews, a couple specific to Canada, the Jerk Minnows one. That's definitely worth a look. And yeah, fair warning. Don't, uh, don't complain to me in August if you can't find any. Yeah, that's enough of me rambling on. Let's get on Gussie. BT Fishing is a northern born small town tackle brand. Focusing on innovating rather than imitating, BT has left a mark on all levels of competitive fishing from walleye tournaments all the way to the Bassmaster Classic. The full BT lineup is comprised of innovative tackle carefully crafted using the highest quality components. Check out the Smeltinator Jig, Elite Marabou Jig, Crusher Jig, Clack Shot, Clean Jig, Smeltinator Under Spin at More at sportsheadquarters.ca. We ship across Canada and the U.S. Use promo code GETTHENET for 10% off all products in the BT lineup. outdoor content has been brought to you in part by Nordic Point Lodge. Located in northwestern Ontario, Nordic Point Lodge offers some of the finest fish in Canada has to offer. Whether you're looking for a family-friendly getaway or a corporate retreat, Nordic Point Lodge has you covered. They offer a luxury outdoor experience with five-star service. Check out the description below for more information. What's going on, Jethro? Ah, uh, not too much. Just, uh, just been ha- hanging out in Georgia. You went straight fishing. there after the classic. Yeah, yeah. Shelbs flew home on Wednesday for a week, do a little check-in, take care of some tax stuff. And uh, <laughs> I've been, yeah, I've been fishing, fishing the last few days. So it's been fun, and uh, probably my favorite part of the country to fish. You know, just like. Uh, th- not many places you get to catch the big spotted bass like you do here and i'm gonna fish a tournament this week on lake lanier um and so i've just been kind of trying there's no pre-fishing for it so i'm trying to get a little warm up in on some area lakes yeah well i was gonna call and ask you about this derby anyway um so we figured we may as well crank out a podcast i'm sure a few folks would want to hear about it uh give us the rundown man because uh i know people around georgia are talking about it but you know up here it's kind of no one's really heard of it yet so i wouldn't have known about it if you didn't shoot me that text so let's hear it yeah well i think that i don't know that it was promoted as well as it could have been maybe but uh but yeah it's a it's a three-day tournament it's going to run tuesday wednesday and thursday everyone fishes two days and the top 12 fish the third day but it's got some unique rules um obviously i mentioned there's no practice um, no forward facing sonar or 360. So, um, not going to be able to utilize that uh, no waypoints. I've fished Lanier quite a bit. I, you know, I probably have a couple hundred waypoints and brush piles marked out there and, uh, you got to clear that. So this afternoon I'm going to, uh, you know, go through my, my dots that I have, look, load them up and just have a look. And then we get a four hour ride around on Monday afternoon and, uh, but we can't fish. So we get four hours to 
um, rip down the lake and with the takeoff sort of way up in the river section. And I like fishing the clear water sort of down near towards the dam. And uh, it, so I'm going to burn about 30 minutes each way ripping down there. And then, yeah, just go and mark as much brush as I can and just rocks and some places where I've caught fish before. Um, and yeah, it's kind of scary. Like the entry fee is 5,000 bucks. So uh, yeah, this is a nut up practice. tournament. <laughs> yeah it's a, you gotta you have know, a set to pony up for this thing <laughs> yeah kind of so yeah, i'm a little disappointed because like a lot of the crybabies aren't fishing that have been crybaby in about forward sonar um i love it like i i'm gonna i'm gonna be out there i know it because i've been fishing the last few days and like every bass i catch i see it on the on there um but it, you know yeah it's gonna you're gonna fish a little different it's the same for everybody so um, you know, it'll be fun. If it was at another lake, I'd mean maybe be a little lot more hesitant, but I, I do en really enjoy getting to fish Lake Lanier. It's probably my favorite lake in the South and, uh, you know, but we'll see how it goes. Um, there's a lot, there's quite a few heavy hitter locals fishing it. So, you know, you gotta, there's, it, the, it's going to be a real good competition. And then quite a few elite series and MLF guys, tour, tour guys. Are there any like, guys that are quote unquote scopers that are fishing it or did they all just yeah no like the uh, paul marks jr and emil wagner they're both yeah i think they they're both have gone off to a real good start in the opens um mm -hmm. this year and they're they're you know they're legit like they've proven themselves already sort of around the country they both live here and they're you know win a lot of the tournaments out here uh so you know they're they're fishing it that's cool um and and they'll probably be real hard to beat you know yeah, that'll be like the old days where the locals will have the heavy hand. But you've done yeah. really well at Lanier without scope. Like yeah. you were leading a like your second Bassmaster tournament ever there, and then had some good FLW ones. Yeah, yeah, no, I've had some good, uh, a couple good, good derbies here. I wish we fished, we came here more often, but it's a place where like if. Uh, you know, if I get some free time and it's kind of on the way to Florida, it's, it's sort of central with our travels down here. I always try and get out there, you know, um, I've spent quite a few days out there, but not that many in the last like two or three years. Uh, but, but yeah, it's exciting. It's, it'll be fun. And like the, the spotted bass are so fun to catch. I mean, everyone in up North would love them. They kind of have an attitude like smallmouths. Um, they're, they're pretty aggressive. They can be aggressive. They can be finicky and hard to catch too but um but they like you know you can kind of always catch some in deep water you can catch them in shallow water um and they're real pretty in most places they only get to be at one or two pounds and in, in this north georgia area for whatever reason um they get big you catch four and five pounders um quite regularly so i've caught and i haven't got one over five this week but i've caught quite a few four pounders and and you know at lanier um I guess this weekend they had a tournament there yesterday and it took 20 pounds to win. But for the most part, all winter, it takes like 22 to 26 pounds for five fish and it's pretty much all spotted bass to win any of the tournaments out there. So I'm sure to win this one, it'll be, uh, I'm sure it'll be in that, you know, 19 to 21 pounds a day average, I would think. Yeah. It's hard to imagine busting like over 22 of or It'll probably drop off a lot like more than the regular tournaments without the scope. I couldn't imagine fishing for a spotted bass without it. And you know, people yeah. are going to, but like, cause I've never caught a spotted bass without the scope. My first time fishing for them was at Hartwell and I had to crank that thing out to like 130 feet. I put the three eighths under spin on six pound braid on a marabou rod. So I could fire it like 150, Yeah, but that's, you know, that's an open with 225 boats, just shit kicking them. So a little bit different, but. It's probably the time of year to have like a shallow, like, you know, a, a no scope derby for them, right? Like you probably get up a little shallower and. Yeah, it's been like the, some of the lakes around here, the water temp's been in like the mid fifties uh, this week. It's real, it's really warm today and next couple days. And then it's going to be a little bit windy and cloudy uh, for the tournament days. So that'll quite a few of the bed fishing guys, like the real good bed guys are fishing this tournament. The Johnstons are fishing it. Uh, <laughs> Hook's fishing it. Uh who John Cox is fishing it. So, I mean, those guys are going to be fully like trolling motor on a hundred looking for fish starting to get on beds and they might not be doing that, but they will probably be quite a few, you know, just sort of, 
they they like to suspend and stage up just right right in front of where they're going to spawn and um you know those guys will be probably doing that uh i i'm gonna you know it's kind of exciting because a tournament like this you're gonna play the conditions a lot more um and i'm gonna you know i like to fish deep out there i'm gonna try and keep that honest but if i if it's too hard after a couple hours uh you know jerk bait fish some docks just yeah try and make some good uh good decisions based on the conditions but it'll be funny because like when i fished here in those the pro tournaments that i have i caught every fish pretty much on 2d and yeah. you'd see them get under the boat drop your bait down and catch them and now with like having the scope on there you like you don't if you get within 50 feet of them they're not you're not catching them i mean they know even in 40 feet of water these things will be deep and like you think that that's really deep water you can get on top of them and like nah they they don't they do not like the boat on top of them and uh, it'll be interesting to see like maybe if you don't have all the pinging going on um maybe you, they'll let you get on top of them a little more it'll be, be interesting to see what happens there yeah no kidding i'm optimistic <laughs> but probably not gonna not gonna not gonna be the case but you never know it's anyway it's yeah it'll be fun um uh james watson's fishing it so i'm, I'm kind of <laughs> here like it what comes out of his mouth this week he's the best yeah well everything we've been hearing from him has had the governor on so i can't imagine with no holds barred watson <laughs> <laughs> if yeah. if no one's heard there's a mlf had a press release that watson was suspended for the rest of the season uh he's got a, a brand fbd saw lots of apparel at the classic it's up to you what you want to think that stands for. Um, he says fish and boat docks. I agree, <laughs> but I guess the owners saw it a different way and uh, essentially gave him the boot because you have to requalify to make it next year. And um, by not being able to fish the rest of the season, next year, too. the remainder of this year and next year, <laughs> his so suspension I'd... carried into next year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, uh, he was kind of their one big character and uh, punted him out. So I don't know. Hopefully he'll fish like NPFL or you might see him in the opens or something. But he's a pretty fun guy to to keep tabs on. I'm sure he'll have a big crew on him this week. Oh, yeah. he he. All the anglers love him. Like he's, a, he's done real well for himself. And, but he's, you know, he's outspoken and he's funny. And, um, yeah, got himself into a bit of trouble there. But, yeah. Um, but it'll be, uh, yeah, I haven't, he, I, I fished with him, but you know, all the years I fished the FLW tour. So I know him pretty good, but I, you know, I never get to see him anymore, but it'll be, uh, it'll be fun to see him this week and, and a few of the other guys that, that, that I don't get to see a whole lot, but, uh, yeah. have you seen a roster yet? Like they're, they've kept the roster pretty hush. Who, who else is hopping yeah. in? That's in I got it. I got a partial one sent to me last week. Um, as far as other pro anglers that were on it, Palinock uh was fishing joey Sefuentes, uh jared littner uh watson mm. okay. I'm, I'm, there's a there's a few more too i'm i'm forgetting but there's a, there's there's going to be quite a few um but yeah i'm not a lot of the crybabies are signed up so that's disappointing i thought yeah maybe... i figured if randy was going to be fishing or like if randy was ever going to fish a big tournament again this would be it <laughs> all the rules are suited to him and i yeah. doubt well, he's i don't fishing. think he's gonna get any more followers if he comes over here and gets his butt whipped so you know <laughs> that's probably how that's gonna go yeah i think we all know what's gonna happen there but yeah not like i know there's a handful of guys on the elites that really love cry baby and about it and you mentioned they're not showing up oh uh, well yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's i get fun. it I'm excited, but yeah, it is. It's, it's kind of scary. Um, cause it's a lot of money to throw down. And I think they're, oh, yeah. when they initially advertised the event, he wanted 200 boats and first place was going to be 300 grand. So it's like, that's some real money and, uh, uh, life-changing money. And so now it sounds like maybe between 50 and 60 boats. Um, so I think first place will be around 80 or 90,000. So still quite a bit, pretty heavy. Um, yeah. and I think paying the top 12, so you got to make that final day to get, get paid. Um, but yeah, if you make the top 10, you can make some, make some money and, um, 
you know, we'll see how it goes. The guy wants to start a bit of a circuit, I think, or, you know, have more of these events in the future. And my feedback would be, I probably wouldn't do these again without, you got to have at least one day to practice, I think, yeah. um, to throw that kind of money around. And, uh, and also like, I don't know why the 360s looped in with uh, live scope and forward sonar <laughs> taken away because it's not even in the same realm. It's it's you know it it's I use it a lot. It's handy for uh, especially for fishing out here. You'd be able to see a lot of the hard spots and and, and brush piles and, and that sort of thing to cap you know at least so you have an idea where to throw your bait. Um, we're gonna just have a waypoint to cast at, so it's a little bit tougher and. The problem is you end up snagged half the time, letting it letting it just free fall. At least with uh, some of that stuff, it makes it a little easier. But um, yeah, you could break out the tuck tape and throw a bunch of four side imaging boosters on your trolling motor, just point in every direction. I think that was the old trick before three hundred and sixty and scope. I heard a guy's mounting them sideways on their trolling motor so they could see like oh, yeah. brush and stuff. You'd probably have to be like a radiologist or whatever one of those x-ray techs to be able to understand what's going on but yeah. i'm sure if it sticks around guys will find ways to like circumvent the no 360 you know they'll just be other technology they'll have underwater cameras hanging off sticks in every direction and like yeah <laughs> once you get a taste of the tech it's you know but yeah. oh well that's gonna be and cool Andy Morgan's fishing it too, so that's cool. He's a he's another beauty from the from the old you know guy that was always real nice to me and kind of a legend. Um, but yeah, he'll he'll be he's in it as well. Yeah, that's awesome. It'll be. Is there like coverage of it? Yeah, uh, so it's called the Touring Anglers Association. So they have a website. Um, they're gonna. I think they're gonna stream the weigh-ins, and uh, I don't. There's not gonna be like like a live coverage during the tournament or anything like that um yeah it's pretty much this guy's putting the you know everyone pays in the in the pot and he's paying out all the money so it's uh you know yeah pretty cool it's pretty much just a club derby like a parking lot derby with five grand yep. instead of 50 bucks yep. <laughs> yeah oh that's gonna be fun to watch for sure i uh I don't, I said I'd fish it when you told me about it. And then I was like, I don't know if I would. That's just like, that's really not enough. Five grand US is enough to retire in Canada. I don't know what the conversion is, but it's pretty <laughs> Well, and like when I heard about it, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm into that. That sounds, that sounds amazing. And then like the day I had to actually like pay up, I was kind of like hesitant and I'm like, oh man, what am I getting myself into here? And, uh, <laughs> There's a fairly good chance I'm going to get my butt whipped just because of the way I like to fish out there and the, the, the weather and the time of year and everything. But, um, but yeah, no, it'll be exciting. It's good practice for me as far as fishing the conditions and, and, uh, and going through all that. Um, that's how you learn and get better. You got to go do it. Yeah. Make a couple good calls and you'll end up with 80 grand. Never know. Yeah, man. Um, you have fun at the classic. Yeah, it was fun. It was a little less stressful than last year. I, a lot of people were asking if there was pressure and everything, and it and there wasn't. It was uh, oh. obviously like going into the the one last year. I had a good practice. I had good history there, and and knew that I if things went well, I could you know I would have a good chance to win the tournament. And this one, um, you know, I worked hard. I practiced from dark to dark every day and, and uh, just I could catch like two big bass every day, sort of through practice, through the tournament. I just could never get like five of them in a day. I was fishing good. I wasn't losing them or anything. I think I lost one one fish on a jerk bait that I didn't see, but it felt good. Um, but just uh, just a grindy, grindy place. And it was for most of the most of the guys. There's a lot of big fish in that lake. So, you, you know, there were some good bags caught and everything. But uh but yeah, it was fun. It's uh, it's a it, you know just an experience that you never want to miss out on, and uh, you know it was yeah. It's just it's it's hard to make it, and you know you just don't take that for granted. Especially, it's just going to continue to get get harder and harder. But you guys had a good time down there, hey? Yeah, we had some fun. I still can't walk very well. I had uh, that one Saturday night after Luke Duncan's thing, Brad dragged us. So he's like, you gotta come to this nightclub. 
and me and chance he hopped on the scooters and went to this place and it was the sketchiest environment i've ever seen so we're like we got to get out of here and we're scooting around and yeah i bunged up my ankle pretty bad she's all black and blue just a, a little war wound but it was funny we took those one of those little e-scooters home at like three in the morning back to the hotel and uh two rockets and some high-end truck pull up to me and chancy scooting over the bridge roll down the window and are like nice ride boys and just peeled out of there like just totally deflated us <laughs> it's like what are we doing we're two mid 30 year olds <laughs> driving scooters around tulsa at three in the morning but no it was good driving home was me like mental in that winter storm Oh yeah, you really hit it perfect and got to drive through that stuff. Yeah, yeah. For like six or eight yeah. hours, I was go. I was in four wheel drive going like thirty five miles an hour. It took. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it took like four hours to get from Fort to Kenora. I had precious cargo too, so I was like really taking her easy with the yeah. family on board. But yeah, it was worth the ride. It was good. Like part of the plan was kind of to bring Ashley there and like you know sh show her. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just the, like so i get the like you know you got to make it one day yeah so it was uh it was worth the trip expo was fun bought a yeah. couple hundred dollar glide bait sitting behind me those those roped me in i couldn't walk past them anymore but that nah, was just good to see everyone hey i made about uh because there is a glide i fished a couple lakes that have these big large mouths in them like they're actually sort of some of the places where the glide bait fishing started and uh, I've made probably 500 casts with one, and I caught one pike on it. There actually is you know, a chain pickerel in this lake. Um, <laughs> that's all I could, all I got on it. It actually swirled on it once, and I just saw this like gold, and I'm like, oh yeah. And then it came and bit it, and it, I'm like, it looks long, and I thought I had a 10 pounder, and um, yeah, I gotta <laughs> I gotta work on the glide bait game because it's it's pitiful. Yeah. That's pretty fun. I mean, it's like the small moth will eat it up here. So at least, but I mean, even like, even when they eat it, they don't really eat it, you know? Yeah. I think yeah. even like in Texas, when they like, there's lots of like outside of the mall stuff and swiping at it. So I don't know. Seems like a pretty big hassle, but it's pretty fun. Yeah. No, I've caught small moths on it around home. Like we don't, we don't know how easy we have it. And then you've come and fished around and like, <laughs> uh, but like you could go and catch a bass on a, uh, beer cap up there. I mean, it's, it's, uh, there and like, yeah, you can have tough days, whatever, but like, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to, to catch a bass. And then when you, you know, and a lot of the places that we fish down here are really good, like really fun. Um, but you you, you get to see a lot of places that just get like an insane amount of pressure and it's not that easy to to catch a bass yeah yeah i remember one day guiding up here in the summer guys were just using little like kytex or ribsters or whatever they were at the time just little three inch swim baits and i was just sitting in the back unhooking fish and driving with the remote and uh both of them lost their tails on their swim baits and i never said anything and just let them keep casting like one guy i didn't notice and then the other i did and just let it on and they their catch rate was the same tailless swim baits just rolling through the water just like a hot dog on a jig head yeah <laughs> but yeah. yeah no i like it's easy to take it for granted up here and you'll hear that from every person that goes down south for the first few times but i mean the best way i can describe it is you can go on lake of the woods after work for an evening and catch more bass than you will on most of these lakes in a full practice and tournament yeah you know, at most of them yeah but <laughs> where else can you fish for a living though yeah no you, yeah you gotta you gotta get down here and uh and yeah i'm i'm so this is like year 12 for me and i always would you know, I've never stayed down for that long in 2021 when the COVID stuff was happening. Uh, we stayed for a few months just because it was, it was pretty brutal to cross over the borders and stuff. Um, but I left at the end of January, I was planning to go home this week and then I heard about this tournament. So shelves went home to do a check-in and whatever I mentioned earlier. Um, but I'm, I'm staying down until the middle of May 
we've got two elites coming up uh, in Florida next week. We're at the Harris Chain and then St. John's River. And then we got a couple weeks off and then and then have one more at Lake Murray in South Carolina. So I'm going to come home after that. But yeah, I'm just enjoying um, like there is so many good places to fish down here. And like this this week, I've got to go to these these smaller lakes that um, and, and it's just phenomenal spotted bass fishing. But uh, but yeah, I'm just sort of fishing as much as I can and going to some cool places and, and just living it up while I while I get to do this stuff, you know. Yeah, I mean, you got her timed, right? You, like you're going to miss a little bit of good ice fishing, but it's not like it's been a beauty you know, late season. And then by the time you wheel back, it'll be mid May and everything will get rolling again. Yeah. I definitely wouldn't even dream of coming back if I was in your scenario. Would you do just send Shelby with a five gallon bucket full of receipts and say, go run the books. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> no, it's just like getting, getting the, uh, everything sort of submitted for our income tax for last year. And then I got to do like, quarterly hst stuff too so she's gotta tackle that a bit for me um but she said she'd do it so i'm i'm very lucky yeah that's awesome i i tallied up uh saying it earlier in the show but i just finished my taxes and i tallied up just the fuel from going back and forth to the tournament so 17 and a half grand <laughs> that's nice <laughs> And like half, you know, half the life of the truck, pretty much. It's just nuts yeah. when you put it on, pay like when you're going through the season, you get a check here and there, you don't really notice it. And then when you actually put it on paper at the end of the year, it's just like, oh my God, you explain this business plan to anyone and they think you're crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, uh, it's expensive to do it. That's for sure. But then, yeah, every once in a while you get a hit on one of these tournaments and, and it keeps you keeps you going for a little while longer and keeps the love for it. And, uh, you know, it's, that's what it's all about, but it's not, it's not the easiest way to make a living. And it's certainly not as glamorous as, you know, we can all make it look with, with, you know, you watch social media and you just see the good yeah. stuff. Most of the time you don't see the, all the time away from home and drive time and, uh, and, you know, brutal places to stay for you know here and there all you know there's lots of stuff but um but yeah it's ex and it's expensive yeah oh well you're uh you got her dialed down there i got a i got a new respect for uh for the touring anglers doing it because it's not easy like and when you're not on the road you're pretty much the rest of the time is just has to be prep time like otherwise you're just going to show up a shit show and you know yeah. i don't know there's not a whole lot of people that can fish under the those unorganized scenarios. So yeah, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Um, okay. So you got this Derby Harris chain coming up. Uh, good luck. And what's this thing called? The national touring Touring anglers association TAA. So if you Google that, you'll be able to get the website. Um, and, uh, I'll text you the link for it here after uh but yeah it's it's uh it's gonna be fun hopefully i don't embarrass myself um but i'm i'm gonna enjoy it either way and like I, if it like i said if it wasn't on lake lanier i'd be a little more skeptical and cautious probably to to throw that kind of money down but uh but it's one of my probably my favorite lake in the tournament lake in the south and uh a place that i've had lots of good days on so i'm gonna go and enjoy that and and get to hang out with some buddies that i don't get to see very often and it'll be uh be a good week okay man well good luck i'll uh once the ice goes here in a week or two i'll go work in all the bass for you so there won't be too many dumb ones for you when you get home but we'll be all watching right. i'll uh i'll link it below where we can follow you and talk to you soon man okay okay later okay. Bruce. see you bud <laughs>